looks south to the crest of the Smoky Mountains. Today you see large pastoral lands. It was very difficult to clear land yourself, but there was a process that made it easier. First a settler girdled the trees with an axe. Cutting a section of bark all the way around the tree cut off the flow of nutrients. Leaves quickly died and the tree eventually followed suit. Crops were often planted right among the dead trees for the first few years, and as a farmer needed, he cut those trees down and used them for firewood. Later on, stumps had to be pulled. This was done with an axe, chain, and a mule, and it was a lot of hard work. So much so that many farmers simply burned most of the trees and stumps in their fields. Now as you look out across the field, realize that by 1850 nearly the entire cove had been cleared of trees. In fact, the land had been cleared halfway up the slope on each side of the cove, about twice as much as you see cleared today. Walk up Rich Mountain Trail and you'll find the rock pile remains of an old chimney from one of the farmers who lived way up on the hillside. They used to say you could harvest two crops a year on those hillsides, a crop of corn and a crop of rocks. You just had to harvest the rocks before you could harvest the corn. It was hard work living up on those farms, and in the 1850s a lot of farmers on those marginal lands left the cove, and the forest started to regrow in those areas. Until the park was created in the 1930s, row crops, principally corn and wheat, covered the floor of the cove. Other crops were grown as well, vegetables, a bit of tobacco, and sorghum. But the staple crop for most families was corn. 